please yeah. come in, further. Oh, so let's move this way. So I'm at Preston New Road. Uh, we're doing a quick Facebook Live. Uh, I'm from Lancashire. Hand, uh, we're at the call. site. Uh, I'm with the legendary Tina here. <laughs> uh, and we're just at the site of uh, where Quadrilla are doing the exploratory fracking. They've got four wells going down. As you can see, uh, we've just been moved on by police. So I think they're bringing in another truck. All right behind me are a lot of uh, protesters okay. at the moment the outnumbered. Uh, by well, police all right if we stop. but all morning since I've been here I've been hearing stories uh, about people who are really concerned for their local communities their local areas uh, the huge impact uh, and threat that this presents uh, locally but also uh, about a lot of the handling uh, of the protesters by the police uh, by uh, the uh, private security who won't tell us who they are or who they are, uh, what company they are uh, working yeah. for who could have contracted to Quadrilla but look I'm not the authority on this Tina is Tina tell us how it's going here well we've been here since January the 5th and that's like nearly I don't know 150 odd consecutive days and it started off reasonably with um, well, in the early days the first few and then it began to escalate and it literally in the last weeks now it's really shut up the increase in the number of policing, the fact that we've now changed from Lancashire cops to include Liverpool, Cumbria and somewhere else. Wales. Liverpool, Wales. Wales. Oh God. <laughs> and Wales, which is a kick in the teeth because they banned fracking. Yeah. And yet their police come and inflict it on us here in England. You know, this is just an absurd way to treat a community. And if you look at it, um, what's been happening on the site, you see a lot of the elderly residents, our disabled residents that are now too fearful to come to the side of the road. So they can't exercise their democratic freedom. Yeah. So I was just hearing about an 85 year old just today who was coming up. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Tell us your story from this morning because you were coming up here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we got. Okay. Let's just break off for a second. Uh, there's a there's a truck coming in. Uh, so some of the protesters uh, sometimes standing in the way and blocking the way for the trucks to come and trying to disrupt uh, what's going on here. Uh, do we know what what the trucks are, are bringing in here? Okay. So okay. So no cases. That'll be in a well casing for the small one. And you can so, actually see quite how many police cars are involved in this. Yeah, so I mean, one, I mean, it's, just, it's just staggering the number four, of police cars. Five, six, seven, eight, eight cars. Eight cars, just yeah. Just to escort cars and vans, just to escort one vehicle. Just escort one vehicle in, yeah. Every time. Nine, nine and that's every happening time. every time. Yes, but every how time. many trucks are coming through? Uh, how regular well, are they coming through? To, I'd say our, our, our average, we can get days where we stop them completely with a lock on, where yeah. people lock on within this area. We try not to disrupt the road. It's a blue light between Preston Hospital and Blackpool. Yeah. We've tried really hard. Maybe two days we've actually lost it. Um, on an average day, they wanted to get in 10 to 40 trucks. Yeah. Um, most times they're not getting in more than three or four. Um, yeah. So they're about three months behind schedule. Our work as um, active com campaigners in our community yeah. is effective. But the fact that you've got to spend six truck vi uh, police vehicles mm -hmm. per truck. But then that makes you ask the question, why are the police here? Yeah. Are they here to facilitate safety in a community or the rapid progress of an industry that's losing money because it's being delayed? Yeah, no, it doesn't seem to be safety of the community doesn't seem to be paramount. In fact, I mean, the, 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 the cars driving by from the community, they're beeping their horns, Always. there's low, yeah. huge solidarity and support yeah. uh, for and what you're doing. what's worth remembering is that our council, at every level of council, from parish up to county, has opposed it. All has really. opposed yeah. it. Yeah. it was central so, government that came absolutely. in. Absolutely. Yeah. And our police and crime commissioner, Clive Grunshaw, said... Um, in the end, the cost of this and the blame for this lies squarely at the feet of Westminster. What did they think would happen? Yeah. You'd overturn a decision by a strong and willful and determined community and then just say, oh, it'll be fine? Yeah. Of course it was never going to be fine. Sure. And also, one of the issues... Just thinking we could probably wander back yeah. a bit now, can't we, because the shots come in. Just a, a, a real yeah. close resident who's my kind of age. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. I'm well, Jonathan. Lovely to meet you. Hi. So what's your name? Sandra, and you're you're close by here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. How how close? Uh, uh, about two miles. About two miles. And uh, what's the feeling of the the local community to towards this? Uh, Sum it up mixed. in one word. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they don't really know. Because they don't, they don't uh, really understand what it is all about, and what an impact it may make on, on well yeah. will make on this community. So how did you get involved in this? Uh, was, uh, I felt the earth tremors on. You felt the earth tremors in your house? In uh, yeah. November 2011, not November, sorry, in April 2011, April 1st, 2011. Yeah. And uh, that was the first thing I knew about it, really. Yeah. I had uh, previously seen in 2008 uh, in our public notices in the local newspaper 
that uh, they were going to do some form of gas exploration. Yeah. Me not being know what shale gas was, yeah. I thought they would just dig about uh, say 12 feet down <laughs> and that would be it. Yeah, yeah. I, d- I found that this is entirely different. Different thing. Than yeah. Sure. No, I gather. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I will share the microphone. You've got to have two minutes with it. Okay, well, let's let's wander uh, back a little bit so we can get a bit of a, a look at the site as well. Uh, so you can see, I think, in the background, what's quite interesting is they brought in dogs as well. I think there were police dogs here yesterday, and the private security certainly have brought in dogs. Now, this has uh, been quite intimidating for a lot of the protesters, a lot of the people from the local community who uh, haven't come uh, down here today. Uh, we gather because they're frightened of the dogs and what might happen. Um, I'm going to be handing in a letter uh, later on to Quadrilla um, asking them to investigate uh, some of the incidents that have been going on uh, in terms of the private security uh, here uh, against some of the protesters, some real uh, some allegations of um, some nasty brutality uh, against the protesters. Someone was hit by a van, you might have seen the, the video, I think it's on the Guardian website if you want to have a look at it, uh, and ask them to invest- investigate. You can see there's a quite a lot of secrecy uh, amongst uh, the private security that are being hired here. I mean, Tell us a bit about that. What's your experience of the private yeah. security? Um, yeah, they are. They, they don't wear their identity a lot of the time. And like you see the one who has got it on his arm, he's reversed it so we can't see it. Uh, they say they're protecting themselves because they fear what we might do to them mm-hmm. or that they might be targeted. We have indeed targeted um, suppliers, but we've done that generally by saying, could you please not supply? Eddie Stobart's pulled out, three cement companies pulled out. Because in the end, what's this contract worth to them? You know. But yeah, there is a lot of secrecy at the moment. But also, I think I'm just, I must say, the word astounded on my videos more often than any other word that I think I live in a democracy and I think I'm safe and protected by my police and then you come here and you realize actually that none of the normal rules apply on this road no, and that's why say, we need witnesses so back in where I live uh, I chair my local ward panel I work with the community police uh, yeah. I've done it for three years we set the priorities for local policing yeah. it's a really constructive uh, engagement you know the, the intelligence comes from the local community to help the police the police get the information yeah. uh, we work together as a wonderful partnership it's a totally different setup here but also, what you have to then say, what is it they're policing against? So analyze the, the activist. So you analyze the activist. What does an activist do? An activist locks on. So we might have a couple of boxes or yeah. poles and people are locked and sitting still in an inconvenient place. Yeah. There's no violence in that. Sometimes they'll get on top of a truck. That's only happened a few times, but when they can, a truck will be going too slow. Someone gets on it, the vehicle has to stop then. Yeah. So they're sitting in an inconvenient place. Yeah. And most times all we're doing is either slowing things or delaying things. At no point is there violence from us. And the police said, oh, but you're antagonistic. We're like, well, sometimes people lose their tempers. But in the end, you police black people on Saturday night for the stag nights. They're not that sensitive that they can't deal with a little bit of anguish from us, you know. So we have posed no threat, and yet their response, by increasing their numbers, bringing in the dogs, constantly sealing off the road, is done as if to say these people are dangerous. So they criminalize us, and they make us look that in the public eye. And I look back in history, and I think of all the times I thought, oh, look what these people are doing. Why don't they just stop that? And then I realized it was probably a lie, you know, that really depends on how you film it, you know, whose perspective. So um, the wells, can you point them out? So okay, so this put, is the well so, pad. Yeah. You see where that fencing is? Okay, so we get on that the, green, yeah. fencing green fencing there. there. That's yeah. the to hide the ugliness. Right. Um, but those two, they're kind of yeah, they're they're pre, um, they're drilling the boreholes down. Yeah. We're waiting on the arrival of the build, big drill rig. They just announced to the Guardian that the big drill rig over it. Um, Chesterfield at PR Marriott where they store it has been severely damaged and sabotaged now that's news to us and I've been in the anti-fracking movement for six years so we're quite stunned at that um, that anyone could have got in there it's really high security and like sabotage, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's the spud rig, the one that's up now. There's an intermediate okay. rig and then the final rig. That's yeah. it, yeah. That, and thank there, you, and that's there, are, well, there, there are four. Am I, They're I'm looking right to drill four wells, wells, but this yeah. is also proposed to be the largest gas field in, in Europe. World. In Europe. So they've got to look like most, most sites would have maybe, you, you have one access point, but you have ten laterals, yeah. so you get ten wells to come down and go horizontally, yeah. maybe down two miles, across two miles. And there's about a mile of yeah, shale. About, yeah, yeah, but, well, you've got to go down nearly two miles, passing through yeah. the second most important ports in the country, the Sherwood Aquifer. Now when they drill down through that, but what they're looking to do is go anything up to 42 wells, because once you're down, you can then go off at different depths yeah. as well within the shale. So we fear that this could be, this is a test site. Um, it's also looking to be the first full production 
to the site. Which we would say, in all credit to the movement, in six years there has been no production of shale gas yeah. and we haven't had a full fracking site develop. Um, fortunately, the stocks and shares reflect that. Interest in the industry is waning. So um, I feel that we are have been succeeding to this point and now we're just intimidated. But we're still not fracking, so it's a good day. It is a good day. Okay, look, I've been told I'm going to have to wrap up because yeah. I have to go to Quadrilla to deliver this letter. Uh, but just if you just joined us on the Facebook Live, uh, we're at the Quadrilla site uh, in Preston, uh, oh. New you wrote uh, right on the edge looking at the wells, uh, looking at the anti-fracking uh, protest movement that is um, really at the vanguard of stopping fracking. We have to keep fossil fuels in the ground. Uh, there's a huge potential impact on the environment in the local area. Sorry, and I think you. the police are now going yeah. to ask me to move away. We'll wrap it up right now. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so hopefully catch you later and soon. Cheers. Bye.